Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today we're doing a box office breakdown for this past weekend which saw Spider-Man No Way Home once again win out the weekend with $52.7 million in its third week of release putting it at just a 38% drop from its second weekend which just makes me that much more happy because it just continues to throw not just the narrative of the pandemic into the faces of the mainstream media but also throws a giant bit of shade over to the likes of Scotty Boy Mendelson, who tried to use the weekend drop-off from last week to justify Shang-Chi and The Last Jedi. Somehow he had that connection to be made there, uh, but I wonder where he stands on this 38% drop in a third week of release, seeing the film cross $600 million in the domestic market and cross $1.3 billion internationally. And again, an insane juggernaut there. We also saw The Matrix Resurrections drop to number five in its second week of release, making a paltry $3.8 million, a 68% drop, only $30.9 million domestically for that movie, and it likely will make, uh, rather will lose somewhere between $150 and $200 million by the end of its run, so not looking very good for that film. We'll talk about that and many others that I know some people care about, like Ghostbusters Afterlife and also West Side Story. Before going any further, though, please make sure you smash that like button, line up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey and also make sure you're subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turn that way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So as you can see here, Spider-Man No Way Home is just completely dominating any other film that is possibly in the running to compete against it. Uh, Sing 2, though it did have a pretty good hold with only a 12% drop off in its second week of release, has made $89.6 million. So this is film that is doing pretty well with the kids and families, it seems like, with those kinds of holds. And actually it has a chance of being able to break even while The King's Man drops to the number three spot, or rather rises up to the number three spot here with 4.5 million only 24 percent drop off but because it had such a bad opening weekend not looking very good very strong for that film and it's likely to be yet another box office failure for these 20th century fox holdovers uh, as this one comes from 20th century studios american underdog i know a lot of people have been excited for this film again 31 percent drop but because it's not really playing in a lot of theaters domestically and it's not playing internationally and there is also no real box office uh, budget that's been reported for this film yet. It's really impossible to make any predictions, uh, predictions or, or projections for this movie. Uh, I know that some people have been, you know, excited about this. I have not seen that, seen the film yet myself. But uh, because of that, it's really hard to, to really track this film as far as how successful or not successful this film will actually be in the long run. So looking at Spider-Man, first off, again, it's going to be hitting uh, theaters in Japan on Friday, this coming Friday, and so obviously that is yet more reason to have some pretty high hopes for this film to reach the $1.75 billion that many people suspect it likely will make. I think that has it actually has a decent chance of getting to $2 billion. Uh, we'll, of course, have to see exactly what kind of drop-offs are happening this week. Many uh, students will still be off from school, especially from colleges. Uh, I know that a lot of high schools will be starting to go back this week as I myself start to go back uh, halfway through this coming week. So that is something that might impact the daily numbers, which have been pretty strong for this film. But something tells me that this, strong, this film will continue to uh, have really strong performances, uh, even though with you know you have a lot of people going back to school, just because this is a film that has a lot of positive word of mouth, has a lot of positive reviews coming from uh, fans uh, and critics alike. So it just doesn't seem like this film is is likely going to fall off anytime soon. One point three seven billion dollars globally makes it the twelfth biggest film ever worldwide, even in the midst of a pandemic. Remember when just a week before this film came out, the uh, the death knell was being uh, heralded, right? That the pandemic was destroying any and all newcomers, any and all films, and that was the reason why uh, Spielberg's West Side Story was a fo was a box office failure. Nope. Uh, turns out it's not the case. It's just that no one really wanted to go see that movie, and that is made very clear here by the numbers and the financial losses for that specific film. Spider-Man, as I said, right, $759 million internationally at this point with $1.3 billion. Again, pretty insane for that film. Sing 2 is up to $144.5 million, so a pretty strong showing here for this movie. Again, not going to be setting necessarily any records, but it's going to be, it's doing well enough at this point to make its money back. And for a sequel that I don't really even remember the first one because I never saw it and didn't care to see the first one. Uh, the fact that it's even talking about being in the break even territory is a win for most films that come out uh, during this time. American Underdog, again, $15 million domestically, but again, not really a lot else to say about it. Matrix Resurrections, however, we can say a lot about because this film cost around $200 million to produce. Uh, that's 
that's not even counting marketing, which likely, you know, balloon that up to around $300 million in total cost, uh, possibly even more. Making only $106 million at this point in time means this film is guaranteed to be a massive financial failure, which is kind of power for the chorus because every Warner Brothers film that came out this year, I think almost every single one of them, with a couple exceptions, maybe Godzilla vs. Kong, might be one of those ex- uh, one of those exceptions has been a, a financial failure and many of them have been massive financial failures this is yet just another one to pile on top of it and after seeing the film I can totally understand why uh, because when you respect the fans you get numbers like Spider-Man No Way Home and then when you don't respect the fans and you just put out garbage guess what you get garbage results on top of it. Ghostbusters Afterlife, I know a lot of people have been interested to hear about what is currently going on with this film. Uh, It's up to $184.6 million internationally, so it is not yet at the break-even point, but it's so close to the break-even point, as I've been saying for a while, that the chance of this film making its money back on Blu-ray and 4K is essentially guaranteed at this point, just because it's around a $1 million loss according to the charting, so so this is in a very good position to make its money back because of that very reason. And if you were to do like a fuller breakdown of this, the fact that most of its money did come domestically, again, these studios keep most of their money from the domestic market and it didn't really do anything internationally might actually end up being a good thing uh, because it means that their takeaway might actually be a little bit higher than even the projections that I have, though I'm going to stick with my own projection just because, again, it's the fairest way at this point to treat you know any and all of these films in their respective releases. West Side Story. <laughs> is a film that some people for some reason still care about. Uh, they, they say it's one of the best films of the year. Uh, the box office just doesn't really seem to be showing that, and that doesn't mean that box office uh, results in a good film, but I, I definitely think that this does indicate that people don't really want this film and haven't really been asking for this film. Again, I would much rather go and watch the original musical and watch the original movie again rather than to go see this, where Spielberg has clearly decided just based on what has been reported in the film, the fact that the, the movie movie does take certain decisions like having several like having scenes in Spanish with no subtitles and the mindset behind it was trying to overcome some type of English supremacy or something like that so that to me is just is stupid it's like no you have another language in your film guess what it's kind of important for people to know what's being said and, and what's being talked about and I imagine that if you have this film released in any other countries you're gonna have subtitles for those movies in their respective languages and it would be interesting to see if they actually have subtitles in let's say it's in a film in Germany that gets released it gets released in various you know other international uh, countries do they have subtitles in those languages for that scene or not i mean I think it's kind of weird of a decision and it's kind of a weird flex to do, especially when there's no reason to flex for this movie. So that, among other things, is, again, uh, reason enough to uh, be able to uh, have a lot of issues with uh, (laughs) this this film and be very happy that it is a financial failure. Kingsman is yet another financial failure as well. $47.8 million is all that that film has made so far internationally. So not looking very good uh, for that film at this point in time. Let's go ahead and look at some charts because we all love some charts here, right? Uh, If we look at the box office charts here, we'll see that uh, a couple of these films here, let's go ahead and go back here. So, uh, we can make some projections for some of the films that have come out so far. So, for Sing 2, because it has reached $144.5 million in its second week, I project that the film will make somewhere between $206 and $289 million. Uh, So, again, looking like it'll be a a pretty good chance of the film being able to at least least make its money back. While Matrix Resurrections, after a terrible second weekend, is looking at a $151.4 million total at at worst and a best case scenario of $212 million. In either case, the film is looking at $150 million loss at least, and we'll go ahead and check that out in just a second. As I mentioned in my earlier projections, uh, this is now the third week for Spider-Man, but based on the week two numbers, uh, the projections that I made for this film were $1.5 to $2.1 billion, uh, with the average being around $1.8. This film is definitely on pace to be able to, to surpass that minimum of $1.5, as it is currently at $1.3 billion, so very, very good look right now for this film to do incredibly well. Kingsman, as I had mentioned, is also a film that is not set to do very well. Uh, right now, the max number it's looking at is going to be somewhere between 95.6 at best and at worst 68.3, while American Underdog will likely see 21.4 to $30 million. And again, that is a bit of a mystery there because we don't know the box office budget for the film, and we also don't know exactly if the film's going to be getting released in any other, uh, really getting released in, in any other, or getting uh, getting a 
uh, yeah, getting a release in any other foreign entities or foreign countries. So as far as losses are concerned, Kingsman's looking at around a 92.6 to $109 million loss, while Sing 2 is looking to make somewhere between either a $3 million loss or $45 million gain. I suspect that the film, because it had a pretty strong uh, holdover from last week, will probably get closer to this number here. Um, and obviously we'll be following that as the weeks go on. But again, it is doing well enough at this point in time to be able to have some likely gains. While The Matrix Resurrections, on the other hand, is not looking very good. A $194.1 million loss is a possibility for this film. Best case scenario would be 157.8 and a likely scenario of 175.9. So again, very well north of $150 million in losses is Matrix Resurrections looking to be. So it's no surprise that one of the producers of the film came out and said that there were no plans for this film to get any uh, sequel or to get any continuation or they had no plans to make any more Matrix films. I imagine that uh, that's not really all that surprising when you see these type of massive, massive losses. So with the updated numbers for West Side Story, the film is still at $118.3 million in losses. So that is just not going to be made up, despite the fact that some people are trying to will that to victory. It's just not going to happen. Otherwise, uh, or rather on the converse, Ghostbusters Afterlife is still doing well enough. Now at $184.6 million, it's only at a $1.6 million loss. So as I said, since this film is getting a release this month on 4K and on Blu-ray, DVD, etc., it is likely to make that money up very easily it's it's again it's 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 a basically it's a sure thing that this film will make its money back up at least on uh you know, as far as physical media sales are concerned, um, it probably might not have enough left in the tank to do anything as far as the box office is concerned at this number. Um, but it is still nonetheless, uh, an interesting uh, prospect for this film to, uh, maybe make its money back. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, but those are the numbers and those are the updates to them. So what are y'all's thoughts? Are you surprised that the matrix resurrections is looking to uh, be a massive financial failure? Are you surprised at how well Spider-Man no way home has been doing? And what do you think the final end result for the film probably will be? If you go ahead and go to my website, ombreviews.com, you can actually uh, keep this film tracked, not only at the box office tracking section, but also I have the box office battle between Spider-Man and all of the MCU films at this point in time. And let's just say it's looking pretty good for this film in comparison to the three MCU films, as now this film making $1.3 billion is well ahead of the $1.2 billion total of all three MCU films from Disney that came out this year. Remember that this film is a Sony film, Spider-Man No Way Home, as it, again, 75% of the actual profits goes back to Sony. And for some reason, again, this is the reason why I'm probably going to switch away from Excel, uh, because it is just taking forever just to load up a simple page. And I know that some people have said that's kind of what Excel does, but I've never had this issue with Google Sheets. Uh, as you can see, though, $1.3 billion worldwide for one film in three weeks versus the entirety of the runs of all the MCU, uh, MCU films, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals, with $1.2 billion. So as you can see, major differences there. Three weeks getting to $1.3 billion. All year for Disney, only $1.2 billion for the other MCU films, so just not looking very good. And if you do take in that Marvel split, though, they do have a $33.2 million gain for all of their MCU films with that 25% cut added in from this movie. So at the very least, uh, it's making some money from that. As you can see, Sony, though, taking a whopping $391 million in net gain profits and likely will add on a lot more there. And of course, theaters have a lot to be thankful for as far as... Uh, the films and, and as far as how much help they've gotten from just this one movie alone, not to mention, of course, Venom 2 being successful as well, uh, especially for, uh, you know, especially for the film and especially in comparison to the original film uh, in the opening weeks of, of that release, especially. But the fact that, again, the entirety of MCU just barely gave theaters much of anything versus what Sony has done in two movies. And most of this is coming from one. Uh, it is impressive to say the very least. So anyway, what are y'all's thoughts about these numbers? Again, let me know in those comment section down below if you like this video smash that like button uh like that fire button if you're watching over on odyssey you're all amazing and beautiful people hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and as always god bless
And now for a huge shout out to all of my December Patreon subscribe star and locals members, animation commentator, Brandon, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Dolores Ed, Dion, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to You Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Hannibal Grimm, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeff Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle 79, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, Times Four, Mitch Dunaway, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody, Mondo Spieler, On to June, Orange Chat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Allen, Stan Andrian, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, and Tina Bojan, and of course, the Empress of the Universe, Tina B. Thank you very much for being my Patreon members. And for my subscribe star members, UAB Mad Dog, Max Mike Jackson, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, Stan 4, John B, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, slash the new number two. J-Rod, the beer guru, and ZK Man. Thank you very much for supporting me on Subscribestar and to my four members over on Locals.com. Kara Tharp, UAB Mad Dog, once again, Mike Jackson, Bifford a Hobbit, and Robert Barnes. Thank you for supporting me on Locals. And if you want to have your name shouted out at the end of every video and live stream, check out the top link in the video description below. It's called Willow or W.LO, Willow Link. It'll bring you to all of my social media platforms and also to all of the various other locations that you can support the channel. You can get access to things like giveaways where I do giveaways of 4K films, 4K steelbooks, digital codes, all kinds of stuff every single month. Also, so there's a level where you get access to all of that, plus an exclusive podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where you also get to ask questions that we will answer on every episode of the podcast. And at the final level, you also have the ability, the chosen of Valhalla level, you have the ability to have all of that, plus in your first month, get a free t-shirt of your choice, any color sent anywhere in the world, and also you get to be featured once a month on the chosen of Valhalla live stream featured on the main channel. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description. You're all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.